We'd like to show you how to use the circuit tester and multimeter demonstrator. In this video, we'll guide you through the setup and operation. There are three ways to power the demonstrator. The first is with the lithium ion engine starter. You'll need the optional 12 volt adapter port. Connect the port to the demonstrator's included 12 volt cable and then insert into the power source as shown. Now press the USB power button until the display reads memory saver mode. A second method is with the engine starter plus. Connect the demonstrator's 12 volt cable directly to the engine starter's auxiliary port. Then push the aux button. The third method is to plug it into the 12 volt port on the franchisee van or any 12 volt vehicle power supply. Now fire up the demonstrator. The unit is divided into six sections. Notice each of the terminals are labeled with numbers 1 through 27. These are the test points we'll use throughout this demonstration. The first is the 12 volt DC power input. Use the included power cable. There is also a power switch and circuit breaker. The second section is for the 12 volt output power and the main negative and positive terminals 1 and 2. The third section is circuit diagnosis pins 3 through 10. Here we can simulate faulty circuits. When the switch is set to the problem mode, terminal 6 adds resistance to the positive side and terminal 9 adds resistance to the negative side as shown in the instructions on the lid. The fourth section measures resistance in ohms, pins 11 through 15. Terminals 16 through 19 simulate a capacitor and diode. The fifth Test different voltages and amperages. Pin 20 simulates the difference between true root mean squared, TRMS, and root mean squared. Pins 21 through 23 read different DC voltages, 24 volt DC, 5 volt DC, and 50 millivolt. Pin 24 is the AC voltage waveform test. Terminal 25 demonstrates the built-in circuit breaker for the EECT 900 multi-probe ultra. And the sixth and final section simulates powering up different vehicle components with the multi-probe ultra. On the lid are printed instructions. These are suggested ways to demonstrate a variety of snap-on circuit testers, digital multimeters, and the multi-probe ultra. The first column shows how to demonstrate circuit testers. We will show three of many. For an EECT 200, Simply follow the instructions. Place your finger on pin 1, then touch the tester tip to terminal 2. See the light, hear the beep. You can also test on 6, 8, 10, or 22 to show the presence of DC voltage. Next are instructions to demo an EECT 424HD. Attach the clamp to pin 1, then touch pin 2 to obtain an approximate 12 volt reading. Touch terminal 21 for a 24 volt reading. Reverse the clamp to terminal 2 and touch pin 1 to test for ground. The LED lights up in green and reads a negative value. Next up is an EECT 401 which plugs directly into the 12 volt port. Green and red LEDs flash to show the tester is ready. Touch the tip to pin 1, the negative lead. The green light illuminates and the display indicates ground. Touch the tip to the positive lead, pin 2, and the red light lights along with voltage. Touch the tip to the 24 volt lead, pin 21, and the display reads overload voltage because this is a 12 volt only tool. Let's go to the circuit diagnosis section. In a 12 volt circuit, pin 6, 8, and 10 on the positive side should read near 12 volts. Pin 6 shows a resistance, a low 6.7 volts reading, whereas 8 and 10 show a correct 11.8 voltage reading. Pins 5, 7, 9 should read GNDV for ground. Pin 9 reads 8.2 volts, which indicates a resistance or fault on ground. Now let's demonstrate a multiprobe ultra. The instructions are on the middle column of the lid. The Multiprobe Ultra has five user-selectable menu modes. 
AC voltmeter, DC voltmeter, amp meter, ohm meter, and switch setting. To demo DC voltages, power up the demonstrator. Connect the black clamp to pin 1 negative and the red to pin 2 positive. Then arrow up to the DC voltmeter mode. Notice the 11.4 battery voltage reading. This is the demonstrator voltage, or battery voltage if you are actually working on a vehicle. Touch the probe to pin 1 to show 12 volts ground. The negative sign lights up green. Touch pin 2 to show a positive 12 volt reading in red. Notice the tip icon appears to indicate the reading is through the tip. Now touch pin 21 to measure 24 volts. Connect to pin 22 to test 5 volt circuits. The next set of instructions uses the plus button on the probe to apply voltage to DC voltage circuits. We'll use the circuit diagnosis section for this demo. First, test DC voltage in the good setting. Voltages on the positive side, 6, 8, 10, should be near battery voltage, which we can see. Switch the toggle button to Problem to simulate a resistance in the circuit, such as a dim or non-working taillight. Pins 6 and 9 demonstrate circuit resistance. The test lamp between terminals 5 and 6 show a dim bulb. Touch the probe to terminal 6. The voltage reads 6.32 volts. Notice the plus indicator on the screen does not light up, and there's no audio signal. Now press the plus button on the probe to apply full battery voltage to the circuit. The lamp lights. The lamp between terminals 7 and 8 is fully lit. When we touch pin 8, we confirm this circuit is good. The lamp between terminals 9 and 10 is not lit. Touching pin 10 gives us a near battery voltage reading, so the positive side of the circuit is good. The problem lies in the ground side. The next set of instructions demonstrates how to apply ground to a problem circuit, or the negative side of the circuit. Touching pin 5 confirms a proper ground. We hear a beep. The green indicator light is lit with no tip reading. Touching terminal 7, the working circuit, also confirms a good ground. Terminal 9 is an example of a bad ground. No beep, no negative indicator, and now we have a reading of 7.78 volts at the tip. Now press the minus button to apply a ground. The negative indicator lights, and we get an audio tone, completing the circuit. Next up is testing amperage. We again use terminals 5 through 10. Set the multiprobe to the amp meter mode. Touch the tip to any of the positive terminals, 6, 8, or 10. Then press the plus button on the probe to read the amperage applied, 0.2 amps, and the calculated resistance, 55.3 ohms. Move the tip to the negative terminals to read the same. Amperage applied and calculated resistance. The next demo tests resistance. Put the multiprobe in the ohm meter mode and attach the auxiliary lead to pin 11. Touch pins 12 through 15 to measure various resistances in ohms 5 ohms, 500 ohms, 5000 ohms and 10,000 ohms. Now move the auxiliary lead to pin 26, then touch the probe to terminal 27 to measure the resistance of a motor winding, such as this fan on the demonstrator. Notice 18.5K. Next up is AC voltage. Select the AC voltmeter mode and place the probe on pin 20. We see five readings on the screen at all times. Use the arrow button to highlight the TRMS reading in the center. We can see the correct TRMS 5 volt reading on a full wave. When we toggle the switch, we read the voltage on the modified wave. Move to pin 24, the waveform test. Here we can read different types of measurements. Arrow to peak to peak. 
pulse width. Here we're measuring the high side of the waveform. The down arrow shows us the low side of the waveform. We can arrow up to the duty cycle, the frequency or hertz, and back to TRMS. Let's move on to the circuit breaker test. Set the multiprobe ultra to amp meter mode and insert the probe in pin 25. Use the arrow key to select the 2 amp breaker and press the negative button on the probe to apply battery ground. The internal circuit breaker in the probe will trip. Use the arrow key to select a 5 amp breaker and repeat. 2.8 amps now flows without breaking the circuit. For the last Multiprobe Ultra demo, component power up, switch to the DC voltmeter mode and place the auxiliary lead onto pin 26. Touch the probe to 27 and press the plus button to apply power to the fan motor. This demonstrates how to apply power to relays, lights, or electrical motors. There's one final mode we haven't talked about. That's switch setting. In this mode, you can select how the probe plus and minus buttons apply power to the tip. Select the M or mode key. The tool defaults to the momentary setting. In this setting, the probe applies power to the tip while the button is depressed. Release the button to release the power. All the demonstrations shown in this video were performed in the momentary setting. In the latch setting, pressing the probe button applies power to the tip and continues to apply power until you press the button again. No need to hold the button down continuously during longer diagnosis. In the pulse setting, you can select the amount of time power is applied to the tip, either one second, one quarter second, or half-second pulsing. Pushing the button starts the pulsing, and the tool will continue to pulse until you press the button again. The third instruction column on the lid is dedicated to multimeters. There are a multitude of tests that can be performed as shown in the instructions. We have selected three. The first example demonstrates DC amperage. Disconnect the jumper lead and connect the negative and positive probes in series to measure the amperage in our circuit. Now we'll switch our multimeter to capacitor and test for charge, 3.4 volts, and discharge of 3.4 volts. Next, set the multimeter to diode test and probe the diode pins. We see an open circuit one way. When we reverse the polarity of the leads, we get 0.5 pass-through volts. Whether you are learning how to use circuit testing in digital multimeter tools or learning how to perform a demonstration with this platform, we hope you found this video helpful. There are many more useful demos explained via the instructions on the lid. Thank you for taking the time to review.